the person who sort of invents a new sustainable um, energy source or figures out how to remove plastics from the ocean it doesn't matter whether they have a degree or certificate what matters is can they actually achieve it that i think is what we need to keep our eye on which is can they solve the problem today on chalk radio we're sitting down with sanjay sarma the vice president for open learning at mit sanjay wears many hats he's a professor of mechanical engineering a developer writer a parent and perhaps most salient for us at mit open courseware sanjay is a learner in today's episode sanjay talks to us about learning from the social systems behind how we learn to the biology of how we're wired to make sense of the world around us. I'm your host, Sarah Hansen. In August of 2020, Sanjay released his book, Grasp, The Science Transforming How We Learn, which he co-authored with Luke Yoquinto. It's about how we learn. It's an attempt to describe how we learn with sort of a biographical aspect to it. You know, some ask me, why is it called grasp? Why, why grasp? Think about it. in English when you really get something, you call it grasping something. I think the German word is similar. Comprehension. It has the word apprehend. You know, you apprehend someone, right? It's grabbing. In Hindi, which is one of the languages I grew up with, you also use a similar word, which is I really got the concept. You grab it, right? So, what does it really mean to learn? That's what. this book is about and what is the science behind it how does curiosity drive it what does it mean to memorize something what does it mean to forget something what does it mean when you actually remember something but you can't access it but when you get it once you access it it all comes flowing out so that's what this book is about and it tries to map it from neurons all the way to a societal level so what prompted him to write the book for sanjay it was about uncovering the history of schooling and rethinking the methods we used to teach. I always wondered why we ended up doing things the way we do. And it turns out that a lot of it is happenstance and perhaps a historical accident. The impact of what we were trying to educate people about, which initially was religious books, right? And eventually it was memorizing aspects of the book and then there's the Greek thread that sort of wove into that and then the industrial revolution and so on. And so the question was if you went back to the basics how would you teach and what would you teach I too am a product of western education principles and I did well but I also struggled and so I started wondering what the science tells us about how educational systems should be designed so once I started researching it I thought oh my god the story needs to be told so the book sort of started writing itself and then I found Luke and he shaped it with me and then that's what I like to grasp So what's the difference between simply picking up concepts and actually grasping them? According to Sanjay, what it often comes down to is having an actionable component to learning. Not just hearing and regurgitating information, but locking it in place by physically applying it. We have this assumption that the learner's mind is a sheet of paper and the professor has a pen. and all the professor has to do is write on the sheet of paper and declare victory and after 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes if the learner is in paying attention that's the learner's fault not the teacher's fault and that is just fundamentally wrong and every parent knows this by the way when we go to the classroom we just ignore that truth the fact is the learner is forming a model of the world it's like a plant growing You can't give the plant a lifetime's worth of water on the day first day and say you're done. And all the potassium on day 2 and all the nitrogen on day 3. Can't do that. The plant wants water or sunlight or a particular type of fertilizer when the plant wants it. By the way, that's called precision agriculture. It's a field, right? But yet we do that human beings. I want to teach you all the math you need in the first 4 months. You should be done. That's not how it works. it's when you use the math that it becomes valuable and so uh, and every classroom violates it every class violates it and curricula violate that principle what marks something as something that needs to be remembered or is valuable well when you process it 
right? So if you have a nice conversation with your child or your spouse, you remember that, right? But the conversation you had, uh, you know, sort of quotidian conversation about, uh, you know, something, you know, don't forget to pay the bill or something. Yeah, you'll remember that, but the conversation itself is immemorable. So engagement and purpose flag learning for the brain as being valuable. And they put it in a sequence that makes it actionable. I've been working with Sanjay for many years at MIT Open Learning. And the phrase that I hear him utter most is, how does your idea scale? I wanted to take this opportunity to ask him about his focus on scaling innovations in learning. There's something about learning that is a human evolutionary aspect of our existence, which is children learn, parents teach. And we keep that. So as an adult, I learn in similar ways to how I learned as a baby from my parents, right? As a child, as a young person. Parenting is not scalable. There's a reason we have few children, but we give them full attention. So I think our biggest challenge is there are lots of people, lots of young people, lots of adults in the world that need to learn. And the challenge is can we scale what is very hard to scale? It's sort of the most important question. And we can only do it if we understand how people learn and understand how technology could help and how humans could help and how coaching could help. But the scale of demand is so vast. If we want to make an impact, we got to figure out how do we scale this thing that is so difficult to scale? So to me, that's the existential question. One of the interesting things about Sanjay is that he's helping solve this question of scalability through online learning. As Sanjay will explain in a moment, online learning cuts out many of the characteristics of traditional classroom models, such as one-way lectures and an emphasis on memorization. So imagine you're in the desert and you're thirsty. If I give you a glass of water, which is only half full, you're not going to say, oh my God, it's half empty. You're going to say it's half full. So for those who don't have access to learning, online education is a glass half full, but it's still water. For those who can have residential education, online learning is quite something else. It displaces lecture time and creates a room for doing all the hands-on stuff that makes education doubly wonderful. The curiosity, the coaching, the field trips, the discussions, the disputation, the fun, the joy of learning, the what I call the magic of MIT. And online learning gets rid of the thing we waste a lot of time on, which is one-way lectures. So to me, online learning has two very different purposes. It's a glass half full for those who are parched for water. It's still great water. So online learning, it is something that makes in-person education much richer as well by leaving time to do the hands-on stuff that today is occupied by lectures. So that's the flipped classroom. Something Sanjay has helped develop at MIT is the Micro Masters program, which makes it possible for people from all over the world to earn professional and academic credentials for MIT courses they take online, credentials that can be applied toward degrees at MIT and other institutions of higher learning. The Micro Masters gets rid of the winnowing function. So let me explain. So how does a master's program work? You admit someone based on letters of recommendations and scores, letters from people you probably have never met, scores from universities you haven't visited or you don't know, admissions. It's a winnowing function. It's based on such sparse information. What we do with the MicroMasters is there is no admissions. All comers are welcome. It's online. The incremental cost of adding a student is very low. Come on in. Take the courses. Finish up. Take the proctored exam. It's not easy. It's difficult. When you finish, you have a MicroMasters. And oh, by the way, if you did really well and you get into school, we'll give you credit for it. So we reverse the funnel. So that's what the MicroMasters is. Sanjay has been on this path of making educational materials more accessible on a large scale for over 20 years. So I asked him what advice he has for other educators about how to engage with GRASP and how to get involved with scaling education. What I suggest educators do is, first of all, write down a wish list 
of what they would like to do, what they would like to see in the education system, how they do it differently, and how it maps to how they taught their own kids or how they learned and how a good teacher inspired them. You know, I was involved a little bit in the creation of OpenCourseWare 20 years ago. And when I was doing my dynamics lectures, a colleague said, hey, can I make recordings? Because I'm picking up your course and I want to see how, you know, the approach you take to teach it. And so when I made the recordings, I called up OpenCourseWare and I said, look, if it's useful to you, I'd like to put them up for what it's worth, you know, because I teach dynamics differently. And one thing led to another and just went up there. And I actually think that uh, to unselfconsciously just share yourself is something, there's something liberating about it, frankly. And I recommend that others try it. Just make a YouTube video of yourself doing something you love, put it up, and I'm sure it'll be of value to others. Making ourselves vulnerable can lead to something of great value for others. It's something we see every day here at MIT OpenCourseWare. So we'd like to say a huge thank you to Sanjay Sarma and all of the MIT faculty who not only share their teaching materials, but also share how they teach through interviews on our website and through podcast episodes like this one. You can find Sanjay Sarma's teaching materials on our MIT OpenCourseWare website. You can also pick up a copy of GRASP at your local library or bookshop. Some other books he suggests educators pair with GRASP are Make It Stick and Peak, The Science of Expertise. And be sure to check out Sanjay's latest book, Workforce Education, A New Roadmap, from MIT Press. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, signing off from Cambridge, Massachusetts, I'm your host, Sarah Hansen, from MIT OpenCourseWare. Chalk Radio's producers include myself, Brett Pachi, and Dave Lashansky. Script writing assistance from Nidhi Shastri. Show notes for this episode were written by Peter Chipman. We're funded by MIT Open Learning and supporters like you.